Hey guys, it's going to sit right again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, so please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue the bridge for iOS that I've been building in Unity and I gave you a lot of functionality. We also walked through a lot of the functionality that I built and then what I'm going to be doing today is basically walk you through extending that functionality because one of my subscribers asked me to how I can retrieve information from iCloud, how I can save information to iCloud, and that is the functionality that I added, and I want to show you how it works in the code, and we're gonna be working together in actually analyzing the code and how you can implement it and call it from within Unity. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what I've been doing in this latest version of the bridge for iOS in Unity. So. I know that some of you asked me for this feature and it's the reason why I'm doing this video. You asked me to implement iCloud Safe and also a way to get that information out of the iCloud. So what I ended up implementing is what's called key value functionality for iOS and iCloud. So I wanna show you how the code works, how you can call it within Unity and also some of the changes that I made on the UI. So the first things that I, that I added is I added these two new buttons. One is the iCloud save value and iCloud get value. The iCloud save value currently just saves a good, and that good is basically a long number that gets generated automatically and randomized, and then basically once I generate that value, I save it and call the native component in iOS, and basically the get value gets the value out. So that's some of the functionality that I added. And then the same implementation, just like I showed you in the previous videos, I have an iCloud save, and iCloud get and then all the other buttons that I just showed you previously. If you haven't watched the videos yet for the iOS bridge, make sure you watch those before you watch this video so that you understand how everything works. So on the UI binding, bindings, I also added the iCloud get value button and also the iCloud save value button. So they're basically bound to the UI. So let me show you some of the code now. So what I'm gonna show you is the UI binding first which is something that you probably already saw. It's gonna be very similar. I have the two buttons that are both serialized so that I can expose them through the inspector and basically attach them through the UI components that I have on the canvas. On the start method, I have two different methods that I'm, that I'm listening to. One is the iCloud get value and then the iCloud save value. So these are the callbacks that happen as soon as somebody clicks on those two buttons. So the other implementation of these methods are very simple. One of them is the iCloud get value. And this one calls into the iOS. Let me make this bigger so you can see it better. And then basically this one calls into the iOS plugin. It calls the iCloud get value method. I pass in an iCloud key. This key is the one that I have on the very top. So this will be the keys that you want to save. So let's say that you want to save, for instance, the score of the game. You can call this one a score. If you wanted to save, you know, how many lives you want to offer, you can call that as so. So basically these are gonna be all the keys that you wanna store in iCloud. And basically based on that key, we're gonna be able to get the values out. So on this initial implementation, everything is a string. I'm gonna look into possibly adding other value types, but for now we're just basically gonna get anything as a string and basically we're gonna store everything as a string. So I pass in the key that I want to save, and then this will give me the value that is saved in the in iCloud. And then I'm basically using the iOS plugin to show an alert. I also have a nullable check and an empty check to determine if this value is empty or null. If it's empty or null, then I'm saying, okay, nothing has been saved yet. And then otherwise I, I basically display the value. The reason why I'm doing this is because if you don't set up the entitlements or for whatever reason you can't connect to the internet, I want to make sure that you can see that alert saying that the value hasn't been saved yet. The, the other method that I have here is the iCloud save value. So I told you in the beginning of the video that I'm basically generating a good. So this good gets generated by calling system.good, that new good, and then basically passing it to a string. So, and then I get the value back as a string. Then the next thing that I do, I call the iCloud save value, I pass in the key, that I want to store in iCloud and also the value that I want to store in iCloud, which happens to be a string in this case. And then I was trying to find out what I wanted to return and I, deter I decided to return a Boolean. And this Boolean will tell us if the value was saved su successfully or if it wasn't saved successfully. If it was saved as a success, then I show an alert. 
and I show iCloud value was saved successfully, and I also show you the value just in case. And then if it wasn't saved for some reason, then I also show you the failure. Let me make these a little smaller so that we can see everything. So that's what I did on the UI bindings. I'm gonna show you the next piece, which is going to be the actual iOS plugin. So on the iOS plugin, it's fairly simple, just like I did on the on the other methods. I have, you know, an extern string for the iCloud get value method and I'm passing a key. And then for saving a value, I'm basically doing a key and a value and I return a Boolean to determine if something was saved or not. If it was successfully saved, this will be true. Otherwise, this will be false. And then the other methods that call into those native C methods are going to be down here. And they're basically these two. It's basically the same signature, except it doesn't have underscore. The underscore is gonna be the methods that are on the very top that will have an stern keyword on. So that's basically everything that I have as far as the iOS plugin. So just so just to reiterate, if you need to call it, these are the lines that you're gonna have you're gonna have to call. And then I also document it in the README of this GitHub repository. The other thing that I want to show you is the actual implementation, which is actually fairly simple to do. And so I have two different methods that I added on my on my C code. And these are as follows. One of them is gonna be the iCloud get value. I'm passing a con basically a constant char with a pointer of the key. And then I'm also returning the same data type. The reason why I return the same data type is because we're returning a string just like I did on the on the battery level is the same implementation and I'm also doing a C string copy, which calls into this method to create a copy of the char pointer that I gave back. And then what I'm doing in here, if I want to get a value, I'm passing a key. I also pass in a key to the iCloud get value method that I have above that I'm gonna show you later. And then I'm also converting this to UTFA string when I, when I get it back. Then to save a value, I'm basically passing a key and a value and then I have a method that I have above that I'm going to show you as well, where I pass in an in a string. So I convert this from const char pointer key to an actual in a string, and I do the same thing with the value. So now if we go right above it, this is the implementation. It's actually fairly simple, and I keep saying that because it is one line of code, actually two lines with a return. But if I want to get a value from my cloud, all I have to do is call this ns, ns ubiquitous key value store, and then I have my variable, and then I, I said, okay, give me the default store, and then I look up the value by the key, and then I return that value. If I want to save something, I do something similar. I'm passing in a string for the key, a string for the value, and then I get my cloud store, and then I set the value, and then I pass in the key for the value that I'm gonna be storing in iCloud, and then I basically save it and synchronize it and get the value back which if you look at the signature of the synchronize, it basically returns a bool, and then that's what I'm returning back to the user. So just keep in mind that this is gonna be a bool, an objective C bool, but if you want to convert that to a C bool, you don't have to do anything. I was trying to do a conversion, but this actually works really well. I'm returning just a bool, and it basically maps to a real bool. So that's basically that implementation, nothing changing here. So the next thing that I wanna show you is how this works in the simulator. So if we go here, let me see if I can make this bigger so you can see you can see better. If not, I can just, there we go. See if we can make it a little bit bigger and maybe move it up. There we go, so everything here still works. You know, if I do a basic alert, if I do a confirmation, see that I get a call back, and then everything else is working. So if I want to get a value, I'm gonna get a value from my cloud that is a good. If I want to save a new value, you can look at that good. We can look at the ending of the good, which is FC4. If I wanna get it back, I can click on it and you can see that I'm displaying the new values. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you guys in here. And lastly, let me just show you that this is being checked into source control and you're more than welcome to use it in your own games and also extend it if you need to. And if I go here and look at the, the latest commit changes that I did to my repositories, you can see that I made a couple of changes just recently if we go here, I also documented what you saw in the code. So if you look at the methods on the very bottom, you're gonna see if I want to save something to the I, to iCloud, this is what you need to call. If you want to get something out of iCloud, this is what you need to call. And this piece right here is very important. If you don't do this, it's not gonna work. Make sure that you have an entitlement requirement that basically tells 
the the item the in iOS that you want to use this basically that you're entitled to use this, this functionality and these are the entitlements that you need you need a key for the iCloud container identifier and you also need a key for the ubiquity key store identifier all right guys that's everything that i wanted to show you guys thank you all right guys thank you much for watching this video i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about what i just showed you please let me know in the comments also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers and also find me in patreon.com where i'm basically posting information about what i'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code thank you very much guys